All right, well, here we are on Daybreak, one of the best maps out there, in my opinion. Yep. Despite what anyone says, I love this map. And down at the bottom of it, in the left side, we have our Red Terran player winning the last game and tying things up. Can he get a lead this time? It is FXO Gumiho. And up at the top of the map, in the blue, from the Team Complexity, formerly from the Team OGS, it is none other than Complexity Nada. Yes, it is. And we'll see what both these players end up going with here. This is uh, Gumiho's pick, of course. So we'll see what he ends up... Uh, I'm sorry, not his pick, of course. That's uh, entirely what I meant to say, of course. And then I myself look like oh. a fool, but I'm gonna that's make okay. A shout out to Simon93P, oh. who reminded me that the, uh, the third commander, captain slash uh, officer in the Imperial fleet to die in Empire Strikes Back was uh, Admiral Mahdi. Was I believe. Admiral or maybe Mahdi. Was captain. I don't know, Cap but he uh, was gotcha. the, he was when the was third that? one that Vader off. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yeah. It's uh, one yeah. in a list of many. I believe that's right. And yes. of course, you know, it's you, you, it's a pretty high attrition rate if you're an Imperial officer. It's true. You know, because Veers, of course, even though he did survive Empire, did die when the Executor crashed into the Death Star in the third movie. Ah, and very true. And of course, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin tragically went down in the first Death Star explosions. Yes. It's a tough life, you know? Yes, he did. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> it's a yes, pretty it rough life. But Luckily, uh, Grand Moff Tarkin went on to be a bad guy in one of the Indiana Jones movies. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, he was. He was in, uh, I think it was the first one, too, Raiders. Interesting. Who was he in Raiders? I'm trying to think one now. Oh, God. My, uh, yeah, well, I think. He was a Nazi. That doesn't really narrow it down in Indiana no, Jones movie. That's though, every bad guy. Yeah, but that's pretty much. Yes, yeah. exactly. Unless you're talking about the fourth one, but let's not talk about No, 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 no. Yeah, that's, that yeah, didn't exist. We'll what what third Indiana Jones movie exactly. What you're talking about? Fourth. Fourth, yes. No, third, good. What, fourth? Third, good. Fourth, bad. Third, good. Fourth, bad. Oh, yeah, so it's my film critic moment of the day. So I'm hulking out a little bit there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, pretty normal opening from both of these guys. We've got the yep. Supply Depot, the Barracks, uh -huh. the Orbital Command, uh, Supply Depot before Command Center, it looks like, for Nada, whereas it looks like Gumiho's going to get his Command Center a little bit quicker. And, yeah, let's see here. As Gumiho decides one racks gasless FE, Nada already has gas up now. Uh, almost has enough saved up for a factory, and indeed is going to put one gas. down here okay. in just a second. So there it is. Never mind. Never mind. That's all right. We got too distracted by the uh, the, the, the no, terribleness I, that is the fourth Indiana Jones movie. I looked at the mini map, and I, I thought I saw two empty guys. So oh, I was, gotcha. I was incorrect. I was going to say, I mean, the fourth, fourth Indiana Jones movie sometimes causes people to temporarily black out for it's, periods of time. It's so true. It's true. Yeah. It's the only Indiana Jones movie that it would not have mattered if Indiana Jones was there at the end or not. Think about it. Ooh! It would not have mattered. The exact same thing would have happened at the end of that movie, yeah. whether or not Indiana Jones was there. That really bothers me. Sorry, that's my that's my uh, Crystal Skull rant. I'll be done now. Okay. No, that's, that's quite all right. We'll just fondly remember the other three, so. All right. You ever watch Young Indiana Jones Chronicles? That was really good. Read a couple of the I liked it. books, the Young Indiana Jones books, but I've never seen the series. The TV so. show is pretty good. Huh. Right. There's a the command center for Nada. A little bit later, here he is going for uh, what looks to be a reactor uh, bit of a reactor to Millennium Expand. Yep. All Popular right. in uh, TVT. And, uh, well, TVZ, so why not TVT as well? Now, Gumiho actually going pretty high up into his minerals once again. Building these two barracks has not gone over to double gas quite yet. We'll see when he decides to put those down, or if he has another trick up his sleeves here in just a bit. Already running out with a few Marines, though. Oh. And he is actually putting up one gas for now. Yep, Hero Marine has to be a little bit careful here, and I'm not talking about the player from Miles. I'm talking Just about wondering. The Marine that barely got away there. Good control, uh, moving one of the Hellions away yeah. forces Gumiho to move up a little bit farther into the range of the second Hellion, and nice Nada micro. keeps all of those alive. Yep, not bad at all from Nada. And looks like we may have delayed Banshees coming out of him as a tech yep. lab already being constructed on the barracks. Starport being built right next to that. Back on uh, Gumiho's side of things, though. Just one gas for now. There's the second, but it's still going to put him a lot later towards, uh, well, really anything, upgrades or tech. Yeah, he's got enough Marines to uh, handle those Banshees, so it's not a big problem there as well. Um, wouldn't worry about that. Wow, that. Oh. Like, all right. Whoa. Oh, wow. He comes back and gets the kill nonetheless. <laughs> he's like, what's that? Oh, you? Oh. <laughs> Bang. Ba -ba boom Dead. All right. Ba -ba boom yes. Big bada boom Bada bing, bada boom. Medivac is the first thing coming out of the Tech Lab starport huh. now. For right. Nada, as it looks like he is uh, some sort of a Hellion drop, I assume. Taking a look at Gumiho's vision. He's not picked up on that yet, though. You know, if Gumiho scans too at this timing, this is about the time that you would see a lot of scans going down. And look at that. Yeah, Nada just totally trying to fake Gumiho out. 
researching the uh, Caduceus reactor as well. Yeah. So uh, totally trying to get Gumiho to think Banshee, but he's not scanning, so nope. it's not going to work out. Yeah, it doesn't scan. The medevac does finish. Caduceus reactor is canceled. Right. And it looks like it's going to be uh, siege tank production from here on out with Nada. Yeah, and we actually have a, uh, a second factory coming up for Nada now, so he may be uh, starting to move down the mech path that's been pretty popular in the set. Gumiho, on the other hand, just adding oh, in his huh. first, so still well down that bio path. You know, uh, check out Nada's base again. He was doing something a little bit funky. All right, he did move that away. That was a little bit strange. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. All right, so yeah, he's going into mech. Three factories either up or on the way, and that Hellion drop trying to find a place to come in, but there's a good turret ring here for Gumiho. Yeah, Nada has to move away with the medevac, so not going to be able to make an escape with these. They just got to hope to get as oh, much man. damage as possible done. Not even using the fourth oh. Hellion. He's a slacker, but he does get a couple of SEV kills. Isn't it enough he to does. justify the cost of this Hellion drop? He has killed six workers so far. Yeah, I don't know if that was quite well. One Hellion not even participating. <laughs> All right. It's like I saw what a heap of trouble those guys were in. I don't want to be in it. Oh, yeah. Oh, and they just dead. Yep. Well, it just didn't work out terribly well for Gumiho, or uh, for Nada, rather. So, yeah. you have to group up. And Gumiho scan sees everything that's going on. This yes. is a pretty good map for Mech as well. Yep. Taking a look around, sees exactly what's going on. How's he going to react to that? He already has his third command center up. We'll see if Nada's picked up on that. Yes, he has. So, uh, he does know what Gumiho is up to. You know, and we have a couple of medevacs coming out now. I just, I love the variety we see right now in, in TVT. You know, yep. earlier in the series, we saw Gumiho play mech against Nada's uh, bio-oriented force. And now we're going to see Nada playing mech against uh, Gumiho's bio-oriented force. So it's, it's cool to see players do different strategies on different maps, different games, things like that. Um, it just gives you such a, a wide variety of, of interesting matchups. Getting close to seeing who, uh, what style will reign supreme as we're going to see both players try to get out, uh, try and get out against the opposing bio forces. Yeah. So, oh, Gumiho won his mech game. Yes, yes, he did. Will Nada win his mech game? Uh, then that is big enough of a sample size for me to say that mech that's, is the best. I mean, that's I'm right. Just, I was going to call it right We've there. We've known it all along. Right. right. <laughs> we just needed this to confirm. Oh, artosis. Yeah. Oh, he's right here. though. Mech is the best. Is pretty strong. Wish more people would try and flesh out some cool builds with it. This looks to be a pretty good one, though, out of Nada. Yeah, it's, it's more of a, a style, really, than a build yeah. over anything else. But, you know, if played right, it, it should beat Bio, like, nine times out of ten, at least. Let's see, uh, you know, I mean, uh, built into that, though, of course, you know, someone with impeccable control with Bio is very fun to watch as well. It's when you see those miraculous splits against Siege Tanks, only losing one, maybe two units to a Siege Tank shot. It's Pretty, uh, it's pretty impressive. Blue Flame coming up now for those Hellion Siege Mode is, of course, already done. And we have an engineering bay on the way now for Nada as well, so we can start up some uh, missile turrets and some ancillary upgrades like uh, high sec auto tracking, building armor, things like that. You know, if we ever have a drinking game about our casting, uh -huh. I'm totally going to add whenever Cat's Pajamas says ancillary. Okay, to now that here's list. the funny thing. Okay, okay, you say that, but uh -huh. guess what? Uh -huh. I actually have taken stock of the last time you called me out on that, which really? was which was uh, three <laughs> casts ago. You've been keeping and, track of this? And, and <laughs> that's the first time I said it, and I specifically said it right there to see if you really? would say anything about it. Well, it's, it's Boom, headshot. It's such a standout word. It's the first time I've said it in three casts. Boom. So you're saying, you say, what? You what? say ancillary one what? out of three casts? That's a lot. I only said it once there, and That's it's a great word. The walking thesaurus. You don't mess with me. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting word. It certainly <laughs> does stand out. I'll give you that. So yes. this factory is in trouble here. All right. Uh-oh. Not as like, is. I'll give you one chance to convert and become my factory. <laughs> it did factory, take though. It. To the bitter end, he will remain a red factory. Oh, wow, even sieging up to take it out. Ultimate insult there. Splashing nothing and doing less damage <laughs> just because he can't. Nada, yeah. why are you so BM? Because he can't be. He's not a. He is not a. All right, well, Gumiho's on three bases now, and that's a pretty good place for him to be. Um, he's not a, you know, waiting for a little bit more before he ends up pushing out. He does have another base of his own coming up, but it's still going to be a while before it finishes. I can't believe you kept track of the last time I called you out on saying <laughs> ancillary. I was curious what you would say, so now I'm going to use it all the time, of course. Just you are, troll you. You already did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so got some upgrades going down for uh, 
Gumiho here. Nada just kind of powering up, making some more factories, making a lot of units. Yes. And uh, Gumiho does have that earlier third base, so he's going to take a nice little jump in supply. But, you know, with Mech, you kind of accept that your opponent is going to be able to power ahead a little bit at this point in the game, and you're just going to play safe enough that you can catch up later on. Yeah, and Nada. Uh, Marauder. Um, right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, what's the Hellion die, unfortunately? More worried about uh, yeah. moving this command center off to the right hand side gonna put up a sensor tower though very critical with the mech built yeah absolutely so it's gonna be a planetary as well i believe too so yes. that's gonna be quite a secure location with a couple siege tanks thrown in there as well all right well taking a look around gumiho taking this uh, spot here inside towards that pocket expansion he's getting close to max his upgrades are pretty good already well into 2-2 with plus one ship uh armor actually so uh, making sure that he gets his upgrades going for his air units, but prioritizing armor at first. Yeah. Which is, oh, well, I don't know. That's a, it's an interesting choice. I wonder, I wonder how much of a difference that actually makes. I haven't, of course, done the math because I, I don't do math. <laughs> uh, but I wonder, you know, what sort of difference that actually ends up making in a fight if it does legitimately let your Vikings survive. You know, one more hit. Well, let's see here. Oh, yes. look at that. Oh well, he's view. he's just wants all of the air upgrades because yeah. he is moving over to a fusion core. Yep, doing the uh, the good old bio into battle cruiser transition. A lot of Korean Terrans like to do this in uh, bio versus mech. Yep, TVT and with uh, mech, if you can kill off that Viking army, uh, then your battle cruisers will just basically own their Hellions and uh, tanks as well. So it can be very good if you play correctly. Yeah, oh, okay. not a. Oh. Now he loses one Hellion, two Hellions. And he gets one Marine in return. Not the best of trades. Oh, and look at this. Gumiho actually oh, man, surrounding nice from the side as well. Loses a couple of Marines, but more than justifies the cost of that stim. That was a lot of uh, that was a lot of Hellions that just died for Nada, too. That's actually a big deal that he lost those. Yes. Because uh, how many does he have on the field now? Just 10. He has as many uh, Hellions right now as he has Vikings. Uh, now, check, take a look at this. 14 Vikings to 10. There's a pretty massive amount out there right now. But, of course, that's the only anti-air on the, at the moment for Nada. Well, he we also has 17 siege tanks as well, which is pretty nice. This is a cool decision, though, because, uh, you know, with no upgrades, these uh, this this air armor is actually going to do double duty yeah. against the attacks from the Vikings. So a great choice when he has those battle cruisers coming out right now. Battle cruisers become very, very scary with upgrades. I mean, everyone's seen that, that fun video of one three three battle cruiser taking out like three zero oh, yeah. zero battle cruisers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So they, they do become quite powerful here. Some Thors on the way for Nada, but that's not going to help a lot against battle cruisers, that's for sure. No, unfortunately not. Let's actually take a look, though, as our first two battle cruisers are popping out. He's not queued up anymore afterwards, but may very well. He does have resources for them. So. Who called in the fleet? Yes. Uh, that kind of sounded a little bit uh, a little bit Caribbean there. It sounded kind of like it didn't uh, work out too well. fun Eastern European guy. Who's here to party, man? A little, a little bit. Hey, hey, I, hey, come to America. We I, have to party. I found an accent that I can't do very well, apparently. I'll have to work <laughs> on that. All right. Well, we'll track your progress. So let's not. All right. <laughs> Nada is going to bust through the destructible debris at the front. And he'll be able to fire up this planetary fortress here pretty soon. But here come the battle cruisers. We'll see if it's going to be in enough time to save this next base. Pretty big air army coming out here. Oh, Gumiho actually just running on by. All right. Yeah, and he's going to try oh. to just do some damage with the counterattack here. Ooh, Planetary Fortress goes down right away. It's a pretty big waste of resources oh, wow. there. And uh, Gumiho doesn't have a well, lot sitting here to deflect Nada. But there, here, here come the battle cruisers. And the front line of air units is being decimated for Nada. There are a couple oh, Thors that are in the air as well, so. but they're getting shut down immediately. And I think this entire attack is going to be stopped just by these air units. The battle cruisers doing so well, and all the production is under fire. What are the health on those Vikings, though? for Gumiho. He had to have taken a lot of damage from the uh, Thors. Yeah, it certainly did. The GG. GG. 